Backstage Brew is at the Academy of Live and Recorded Arts, and now we are in the television studio here with the teacher, Billy Geraghty. Uh, Billy, what's in your brew? Hello, mate. It is pretty straightforward. Normal builder's tea, yeah. milk, one sugar. Love it. On set, a brew yeah. is potentially one of the most important things you'll get. It's probably one of the most important things, definitely, because it's the thing that gets you going in the morning. Yeah. Without a brew, you yeah, <laughs> have a hard time. Hard time to get going, yeah. Okay, so um, obviously you've worked loads in the, in the industry. What mm. was like some of your like, favourite experience? Um, I certainly, in terms of stage, um, I spent, so I got very lucky, I spent three years as Buddy Holly in the first Buddy Holly when that first appeared in 1989, a oh, uh, long time ago. Um, and then I spent a lot of time on things like, I got a chance to go into soaps, so I, got, I did things like London Bridge, I did EastEnders, um, what else did I do? Things like Last Detective, which was a long running detective series, I worked four years on that. So all sorts, and then about, uh, where are we now? About yeah, 15 years ago I did a, um, a show based on the life of Jerry Lee Lewis called Great Balls of Fire. You shake my nerves and you rattle my brain. Too much love drive a man insane. You broke my will. Oh, what a thrill. Good on this career. Just great balls of fire. Yeah. Which was great because I got the chance to meet him. And I got a chance to meet people like Chuck Berry and Little Richard and spend a bit of time with them. And that was, that was a, a blast. So yeah. you kind of done everything really like you've done a bit of loads I've of had a good things. I've been very lucky I mean when I came into the industry it was much easier to actually be able to carve out a whole profession yeah you, you didn't necessarily have to have another job you know yeah, if, yeah. if you worked people heard about you or directors said yeah I've worked with them they're fine they're good to work with and you get on to other jobs and other jobs and other jobs so it was a really um, easy transition for me mm. it's much harder for you lot now trying yeah. to get into this industry uh, would you say, um, with the students here obviously trying to break into the industry, that because of that it's so much more important to have industry professionals who are working or have worked and, and, and know what they're talking about? Absolutely. I mean, if, you, if you're going to facilitate, if you're going to teach, you're going to offer anything, you've got to have some experience of what you're actually teaching about, as far as I'm concerned. I don't, you can sit and get as many degrees as you like, but if you've not actually been on set, if you've not actually been on set at 10 to 7, when the executive producer, producer is screaming at the director, saying you've got 10 minutes before you hit overtime, where thousands of pounds are going to be spent and you've got actors who are young actors coming in for their first take at 10 to 7, panic, mm. panic, panic. It's a highly stressful place to be a film set. And the way I do it, the way I work here, is that I try and get right from year one, I try and expose everybody, all students, to that kind of pressure yeah. so that they get used to it. So that when they come to that first day on set, they, it's not really. it, <laughs> they know exactly what everybody's job is, they know exactly what everybody's doing, they know their bit, and they know that they're safe, they're in safe hands, and, they, and that, it, more importantly, more than anything else, that it's a team effort. Nothing works mm -hmm. unless everybody works together, so it's totally ensemble work. Even though you're there as the performer, there's a hundred people behind the camera, yeah. all working towards that one thing of getting a good shot of you. Yeah, and another thing as well with the TV training here is that you have a range of different styles that you have to follow. So, for example, today we've been shooting period drama, yep. and there's a lot of uh, challenges with, with that in, in this studio as well. It's a brilliant studio, but you're about to get your own new studio. We're going to have a lovely new Aura studio. So. If you want to join Alra, now is the time to audition. <laughs> it's going to be a lovely new TV studio to play with. There are also many other reasons as well. Yeah, but that's the main one. Um, so there is, yeah, there's, everybody needs to get the opportunity to do as much as they can. And I, my attitude has always been that why shouldn't you have a go at doing period drama? Mm. Why shouldn't you have a go at doing American? Because, it, you know, doing American contemporary work, American classic work, period drama, contemporary drama, soaps, everything. You'd be exposed to everything because you might suddenly surprise yourself. Everyone has the ability to do it. It's all about self-confidence. And the more time you spend in front of the camera, the more time you spend learning about all the roles that happen behind mm. the camera as well. And experience crewing, experience doing continuity, doing sound, doing lights, whatever it is, the more you get of doing that, the, the more you'll be relaxed when you get that first chance to yeah, go Yeah, and I set. think you appreciate it more when you are the performer on the set as well, because you appreciate how much hard work goes into everything behind the scenes. For people auditioning to drama school, yeah. for, for exactly that reason, uh, what advice would you give to them in terms of like 
people that you know you look for when you audition people or any advice in terms of actually auditioning itself or uh, in terms of potential students? In terms of just general advice for auditioning, be confident. You've worked on these pieces, come here and show us the best that you can do. When you get that moment to stand up, take that space and do your bit, if you're sitting around looking and wondering what everybody else is going to do or you're thinking, oh, well, they've got my same piece as me or whatever, you're not focused, you're not in the moment and you need to be in that moment and show us what you can do and take confidence in that. Otherwise, you'll walk out the room going, what happened? I don't remember. Mm. I mean, the great thing here is that a, a lot of people that go through the first two stages of interview then spend the rest of the day with us. We try and do it all in one day. So we get a really good all-round picture of what students are like, what potential students are like. Mm. And some people can really surprise you. And then you suddenly get to this little section where we do a bit of improvising work and suddenly they can blow your mind away. Yeah. And you think, well, that's the sort of person you want, someone that can work in an ensemble, someone that can work with somebody else, listen to somebody else, offer ideas, receive ideas. There's a lot of things we're looking for, but the most important thing is that you've got a creative approach and you've got a positive approach. Mm. And that you connect as well. That helps. Yeah. Um, so quite a few things for people to work on if they want to um, apply to drama school, but that's kind of like an insight into what happens behind the scenes. Billy, thank you. Thanks, Mark. Cheers. Thank you.